we today Ooh. just watched another episode, episode of two. Five Days of Memorial. We're in episode two. Okay. There's there's so many thoughts. Like, we literally just stopped watching the episode like five minutes ago. Mm-hmm. So, like, everything is just, like, fresh. Fresh, and it's, like, hitting me. Um, Hello, everyone. I'm Jason Perez. And I'm Wesley Long. And we're bringing you a fresh new take on disaster preparedness. Welcome to Disaster Class. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Disaster Class. I'm Jason Perez. And I am Wesley Long. Wesley, you know what the bell means. Class is in session. Class is in session. So, um, we today just watched another episode Episode of Five Days of Memorial. We're on episode two. Um, So, if you haven't seen our first episode um, talking about this series... Uh, you should go back and watch it now because um, yeah. there will be some spoilers. So if you haven't watched yeah. the show yet at this point, you know, go watch it. It's on uh, five days of um, five days at Memorial on uh, streaming on Apple TV. Go yep. check it out. So um, this episode, Wesley, what do you think? Potent. Yeah. Um, OK, there's there's so many thoughts. Like we literally just stopped watching the episode like five minutes ago. So mm-hmm. like everything is just like fresh fresh and it's like hitting me um i cannot underscore the value of Mm pre-planning you have to plan ahead yeah like and you have to really look at the the geographic information for your area you have to do that so for this hospital in this location to not have an evacuation plan for flooding egregious absolutely like, what like what are you doing <clears throat> then based on where they are right so episode two things are not super horrible at the beginning at the beginning of the episode you're like okay yeah so maybe we recap so it's yeah. so they're they're they still got power the they city's still, out of power the city's out of power but the generators are working the generators are working at the hospital yeah um but not the generators that Take care of the air conditioning. Yeah, so, air so they, conditioning they have out. lights, but they don't have they don't AC, have power, and it's New AC. Orleans, you know, I think it's Sticky, was, it's hot, it's yeah, nasty. It's hot. So that's a concern, but people are, are alive. They've got lights. Um, they've got food to some degree right now. They've got water. They're keeping the patients moderately satiated, hydrated, right, taken care of. And again, it's now the storm quote unquote has passed. Yeah. They survived the initial they, they, impact they, of the storm. Right. The initial impact. Blue of the skies storm. are out now. Yeah. Like you're like, okay. And a lot of what they're saying is we've made it through the worst. Correct. They still got about 18 inches of water outside. 18 inches of water outside. And they are a growing concern because that number's not dropping. Because typically what happens is they had yeah. pumps. City New pumps. Orleans has pumps that if there is flooding, they, you know, the will kick in and, and get the water, get the water out. out. So the level should be going down. And so they're concerned like, wait well, a second. Right. That water is it's like still it's at eighteen inches, like, maintaining. It's not going down, so that right. that was raising some it's flags a, for it's them. cause for concern. Yep. But again, you're in an area that is predominantly going to be hit with floods. Like that's going to be the predominant natural disaster that you're you're going to be dealing with there constantly. To not have an evacuation plan again, egregious. Like it's you can't. That's yeah. It, it's so much larger than just saying it's an oversight, right? Because people's lives are at stake, right? So, um crazy not to have a an evacuation plan for flooding in this episode it's okay to do a little spoiler like spoiler alert guys so spoiler alert what what's gonna happen is and if you guys know the story this isn't spoiler yeah you don't want me to hit it yet well not yet because i think we we missed um one key thing that happened earlier in the episode um and this is i think a big subject for disaster preparedness emergency management and planning right um All right, everyone, so we're going to pause real quick for this week's sponsors. When you need an emergency plan, you need Doberman Emergency Management. Whether you are buying a home and want to know about your local hazards, or you are a professional needing additional support, Doberman Emergency Management can help. Visit DobermanEMG.com today to learn more. Instinct Ready is here to help educate, prepare, and equip you for disasters. 
everything from disaster preparedness education to quality survival products. Use promo code DISASTERCLASS at instinctready.com today for 10% off site-wide because preparedness starts at home. All right, let's head back to the show. There was some, a lot of misinformation. Oh. Like, we didn't even talk about that yet. Yeah. Before so, we even get to, I know where you're going. Yeah, before yeah, yeah. we even get there. Yeah, so the misinformation situation in this, it's depicted very well. There's a story that is told, and it's told to one person. It's the game of telephone. Exactly, right? the game it's, of telephone. It's the game of telephone. By the time it gets to, like, the third, fourth, fifth iteration, it has now blown out of proportion into this unbelievably crazy situation that would be potentially dangerous um, with criminal charges being pressed. like And it's crazy, and it's creating panic it's because always absolutely people are, panic. are feeling unsafe. Yeah, because people are believing the rumors, right? So, and they're feeling unsafe. And it's just, it, panic is ensuing. And also to the effect that it has later on when real information comes in from not normal Correct. sources, now there's, misinform- there's mistrust Correct. of that. It's like, well... Well, we've been hearing a lot of stories today. We don't really think that what you're saying is true because we've been hearing a lot of stories today. So from an emergency management standpoint, right, and we the way we use the terminology here, and you guys are familiar with this here at Disaster Class, we know we're not necessarily dealing with individuals that are uh, certified, degreed emergency managers, right, that work for offices of emergency management. But in each of our families – someone has to be the emergency manager for that family, mm-hmm. right? Let's bring it down to like the, the, the level of the people. So you have to have some type of way to address where you're getting your information, how that information is going to be vetted, and then what information you choose then to pass on to others and how you choose to pass it on because the game of telephone can get very, very dangerous yeah. as shown at the beginning of that episode. Get yeah. very dangerous and so for you, multiple reasons. Yeah, and you have to, you know kind of vet your information sources to make sure whatever information you are getting about the disaster or whatever is going on, the crisis that it's, you can trust it. It's accurate. And so, you know, with that, we recommend that you try to go as close to the source as possible. Um, Your local emergency management agencies have channels of issuing information to the public. Correct. Right. They have ways of messaging. Yep. That was a whole thing uh, when we choose. did our time dynamic populations mm-hmm. course. There's a whole section, a whole section just on messaging. messaging and how, how do you it, get to do messaging it. out mm-hmm. to the to the to the masses. So try to identify those channels yeah. well in advance before a crisis hits, so that way you know where to turn, where to go, yeah. and that the information you're going to be getting is going to be reliable and accurate. Yeah, because it's huge. It played a big part. In, in this episode, the yeah. misinformation. Because yeah. misinformation, it's it's dangerous. And yep. then it, it creates panic and create distrust. And yep. then, like you said, when there is new information coming, then you're like, is this? Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. So, but anyways, I just wanted to hit that because I think it's um, a really important Oh, part. no, absolutely. Very, very important. Yeah. And you pick that up in watching that episode. Like, you got you to gotta know your sources of information. Yeah. Um, but going where you were going before. Yeah, so now where we're going... Blue sky day, 18 inches not dropping, not that horrible. They survived the worst they of it. They survived the worst of it, right? Because, I mean, right, the in wor- theory. In quotations. Yeah, the worst of it. Um, but for us who are looking at it in retrospect, and we know, you know, in hindsight, 2020, now the levees are breaking. Yeah. The, the one levee breaks, and the levees are there designed to keep water out, but there's so much water they can't. So at the end of that episode, we see the water kind we of see rushing a, we in. We see a military personnel come to National the hospital Guard. and be like, hey, letting you guys know, you got 15 feet of water coming now. What are you going to do? And he's like, you better start that evacuation plan. And again, to harp on it. And they're like, we don't, we don't got have one. an evacuation. He's like, well, you, 15 feet of water is surging. It's on its way right now. Um, you got to go. You yeah. got to figure it out. And so, it was at that moment now they're starting to think about Head, head count, count. Right? right? Who who's in the building? What are, like who's been discharged? Like who like they're now Doctors, asking patients. all these questions. That's like you're waiting now. You're waiting now. To Why, ask those yeah, questions. that should have been an ongoing census count. That sh- that should have been from the beginning, from the jump. Yeah. And again, hindsight is twenty twenty. Absolutely. Easy now, but you could just see how many preventable things happened in this scenario. Mm-hmm. That, and that's the reason we're doing this. We're not doing this because we think it's a, a cool TV show to watch. 
we're not rec- we're not spending podcast time on it just because it's something fun and we're promoting Apple for some reason. Lessons learned, lessons folks. Lessons learned are huge. This is lessons learned. This is this is the school of hard knocks right now. We are looking at this scenario and and just picking out pieces that we can change in our everyday life so that we're a little bit better prepared when something like this happens to yeah. us. Because there are so many components of this that were preventable. Absolutely. Just so preventable. It, it, it didn't even need to be dealing with this. Mm-hmm. And that's the sad part, right? Because yeah. then you have, you know, loss of life, completely unnecessary. Yeah. So, again, that, that's the purpose of this is to look at these lessons learned Um Learn from their and example. It's a true story, right? Yeah. This is all based on real events, yep. so it's not far fetched. This is no. not fantasy. This, yeah, this is, is somebody making up some scenario, saying, oh, "Imagine if." No, this is what happened. This is this is real life. This is what happened. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and as a result, um, the emergency management field has gotten has grown leaps and bounds from incidents like these because they look back and said, "Wow, so much of this was preventable." It's allowing us to have action items and take it into the future now. But again, just for us as individuals, that's the takeaway. Yeah. Look at all of these individual components and be like, all right, what would be under my control? What's under my control now? What what can I shore up now so I don't have to deal with that later? Yeah. Right? That's the whole purpose of this. But that episode ended, and I'm like, I, I don't even want to know what's going to happen episode three. Because it's like, water's coming. Water's and they, coming. they are already, like, maxed out. With their capability of managing this situation. Yeah. Yeah, you, know, you got 15 feet of water coming at you. Carrying an SUV. Like, what are we, what? Yeah. Yeah. It's big. Uh, it's uh, impactful for sure. Yeah. So, that was episode two. Um, we'll come back <laughs> yeah. to you after we watch episode three. Uh, but go ahead. Go watch uh, Five Days at Memorial streaming now on Apple TV. And, uh, yeah, it's uh, definitely a... A lot of uh, lessons wrapped up in this uh, series. So, yeah. But um, before we conclude, um, again, we announced it um, previously, January 30th. January 30th. uh, Community Emergency Planning Course hosted by yours truly, your favorite podcast host, myself and Wesley. Uh, We're going to be doing a live, interactive, virtual class um, for you, our podcast viewers, our disaster classers, as yes. we're calling disaster you, classers. I think. Yeah, okay. rolls yeah. right off the tongue. <laughs> so January 30th, uh, tickets are available now. Uh, go sign up. It's going to be a really fun time. You'll yep. get to interact with Wesley and myself, get to ask questions, uh, get to dive deep into yeah. kind of the science of emergency planning. Correct. Um, and, and we're going to do some of that stuff. We yeah. do the things we talk about, like what we're talking about that should have been done for here yes. at, at Memorial, right? Hazard identification risk assessment. We're actually going to teach you how we're actually going to teach you how to do that Correct. for your families in your location. And then we give you an emergency action plan and, and walk you through the entire process of that. So you have the muscle memory so that you can go back as a family and do a more robust approach, right? We're only going to do, I think we, we, we tackle two. Mm-hmm. We have you address two hazards that we walk you through, through the course of the class. Um, but realistically speaking, any person is going to have probably 8 to 10, maybe 15 that they're going to be wanting to look at um, to really take care of their family. We're going to walk you through the first two, give you the process for that, let you ask all your questions, make sure you're comfortable with it so that when you go home with your family, you can do that. Fill out the emergency action plan, create a plan to practice if there's an escape or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, put those things into practice so that what happened at Five Days in Memorial in, in the book and in the movie – in real we're life. just trying to, and in real life, we're trying to avoid that, right? Try to, we're trying to minimize the impact for these things for you guys, right? Yeah. We're not, you know, me, we're set. We, we've done this process for ourselves, but we feel it's our mission now to help others. Uh, and we're going to be building capable citizens, right? That's what we want through this is citizen capable. That's what we're looking for. Yeah. Yeah. So go sign up. Tickets are available now. We'll put a link in uh, the description and, um, yeah, so you can go and, and sign up. It's going to be fun. Yeah. But um, before we conclude, as always, there is oh, homework. Oh, there's homework. Yeah, we need you to like, subscribe, um, you know, sign up for alerts, um, reviews. We love it. Thumbs up, five star. 
Tell us what you liked. Tell us what you didn't like. Comment on something. If you got any recommendations, we always want to hear from you guys. Yeah. And as always, if you have a question, you have a preparedness tip, a disaster story to share, uh, send us an email at disasterclass at instinctready.com or send us a message on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn. And doing so will always put you in the running to be featured on the show and win some cool prizes. So thanks again for listening. Uh, stay educated. Stay prepared. Stay equipped. Class dismissed. Class dismissed. Disaster Class is part of the Readiness Lab, the home for podcasts, webinars, and training in the field of emergency and disaster services. 